Hey guys, Seth here to help you level up your fandom. Welcome to part 3 of the MagentaBot build log. This one is all about the print bed and the Z-axis build. If you haven't seen part 1 or 2 yet, click on the card up in the corner and watch those first before you follow along through the intro. Okay, so first up we start with the print bed itself. So this is a big chunk of aluminum. It's 18 by 18 square inches. And right now I'm just marking out the center for the silicone heater um, so that the heater pad can be centered on the build plate. Um, so you can see I'm just marking it an equal distance away from each edge. You can see. And then line it up and, and mark out where the wires come out of the silicone heater so that I know, you know, one, where they go, but also so that I can position the thermistor and, and things like that um, as close as possible without obviously being underneath the silicone heater because it needs to make good solid contact with the aluminum build plate itself. So I'm just marking out where the thermistor is going to go. So I'm going to be using Tom's method of attaching a thermistor to a custom heat bed and that is a screw and a washer that holds the thermistor into its own separate hole right next to where the screw goes. And I just need to center punch where I'm going to drill all of the holes so the bit doesn't wander. I'm going to pass M5 bolts all the way through this aluminum plate and into spring-loaded joists that are attached to the printer itself so that I can level the plate and it will securely attach. Make sure I'm tapping the holes that I'm going to be threading through. Um, you can see the two hole design here, one thermistor and one attachment. And I'm going to stick this heater to the build plate, and I swear I cleaned this beforehand, but clearly I did not, or didn't do it well enough. But it's self-adhesive silicone heater, it's meant for heating up, you know, steel barrels. So you just line it up with the marks that I made in the first shot, stick it down, and then slowly peel off the protective backing, and stick it nice and solid to this nice clean aluminum plate. And since this is the underside and you can't attach anything really, that's why I had to have the attachment points off to the edges and all the thermistor and, and things like that are all kind of off in the edge of the build plate because there's no way to really attach them underneath the silicone heater. So back to the frame that we built in, in the last couple episodes. Um, I'm attaching the center bar with the center motor, which we'll go over later. These are just bottom brackets that help secure the center bar, um, which I will be referring to as the Z motor bar from now on. Next we're attaching the actual uh, cantilever mount for the Z-bed. So this bar will be the one that actually attaches to the frame, moves up and down. Um, you can see the, the order of operations here. First, we've got an M5 bolt that goes through the whole bracket set. Um, we have four of the same kind of wheel assemblies that I'm building right now. It starts with a, a washer and then a spacer, a V wheel, and then another washer and a spacer, this nice magenta spacer, and then finally a last washer and the, the bolt will go through and attach the whole thing. All four of those bolts are attached the exact same way. So there's four wheels per side uh, so that this cantilever gantry mount is nice and sturdy and you can see in this upper right hand corner that same gantry I have the wheels offset. Now 
uh, there's things I need to explain. Since I don't actually have the footage, I need to explain what's happening here. So here you can see a layout of how the Z-Bed attaches to the frame. Um, we're going to start with the big box component. is a power supply. It's an ATX PSU. Um, Got to use that because the motors require quite a lot of current, and I'm doing a bunch of other stuff like powering Raspberry Pi and all of that stuff. We have one single motor here on the Z axis, which will be synchronized between all three of the lead screws that you can see here that run the full length of the height. I'm missing one somehow. Each of those lead screws has a pulley attached to the bottom that is then attached to a bearing, which we can see right here in this shot. Um, each lead screw is attached to the a 40 tooth pulley um, and then that pulley is secured you know via set screws to the lead screw and then there's a washer and then a a ball bearing uh, a, a skate bearing like 600 series bearing the lead screw and pulley sit on the washer and the washer sits on the center race of the bearing and then the outer race of the bearing will spin in the white bracket that you can see above the arrow. I have each of the pulleys offset so that they are at different heights, which will allow me to have different belt heights, which we'll see in a second. Each of them sit right there in all three of those brackets. The belt will be two different belts. We have a red belt here that just connects to the main motor and one lead screw out on the frame. And then the second belt is supposed to go through those tensioners and connect to these other two brackets together. So we have two belts that connect all three lead screws to this one coupling pulley. Now, this is a 20 tooth pulley that's got two different pulley sections and together those two sections will synchronize quote unquote all three of the lead screws together so I don't have to worry about synchronizing two different motors together. And this is why I have to have each set of pulleys on lead screws at a different vertical level. So the two main lead screws that are attached to the Z bar on one level and then the third lead screw that is off on the frame is sitting at it. The pulley is reversed so it's a little bit higher so the belt sits at a different level so that I can have two different belts on two different actual heights so they do not interfere with each other. Attaching the bracket system for the gantry to that actual uh, Z-axis gantry bar. And the gantry itself will just cantilever out over the rest of the printer and the print bed will sit on top of that. What's cool about this bracket system is it kind of allows for slightly less than perfect, less than perfectly square cuts on this aluminum. So if, if the aluminum bar is not cut perfectly square, there's a little bit of leeway to still get that gantry and Z bed nice and level and square within the bracket. Use the same mounting system as the Z bar at the bottom of the frame and most of the rest of the frame is constructed the exact same way. You've got overkill brackets since this thing is so massive. We have top and bottom and inside and outside bracing so that the aluminum extrusion is nice and secure all the way around. It's got a lot of weight to carry. See how long these z-axis screws are. These lead screws go all the way down. And you can see how it sits in that bracket there on the z-bar. And now you can finally see how the two belts are going to be oriented on the center Z bar and then across to the frame. Another note here, I ended up moving those two tensioning pulleys on the Z bar much further away from the center 
because the belt itself actually did not need very much or probably any tensioning at all. Uh, the size belt that I had chose was almost exactly perfect with the two pulleys and the center motor. So these are the leveling spring slash attachment screws for the Z bed. Um, so now we can slide the bed itself into place. And here you can also see how the three lead screws will attach to the floating gantry. I'm trying to keep the spring and the washers all in place while I move so that I don't have to do this all together. Just using my third and fourth hand here, not a big deal. You see how that M5 screw goes all the way through the print bed and down into the 3D printed brackets that are on the aluminum extrusion and that spring in between will allow for tension leveling or tramming of the whole bed itself so that I can really fine tune how close it is to the hot end because the hot end can't really be moved because it's a, it's fixed to the top bar as part of the Core XY kinematic system. Then lastly we've got to stick down the build surface. So clean this aluminum, actually clean this one this time. And then we're going to be using a sheet of build tech. Uh, I like build tech, but the only reason I really had to use it here is because it was the only print surface available in the size that I need, uh, which is a 14 by 14 sheet. It's very large and I had to buy three of them. So at least I have backups now. Standard sticker procedure as you might expect. Just stick down one corner and then slowly peel away the backing and make sure you don't get any bubbles underneath. It's a huge pain in the butt to deal with bubbles for build tack, so you want to avoid them. That's it, nerds. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode and make more art.